So have you personally found any new species and how do you search for these things? Are you just going to seagrasses and basically swabbing them on a petri plate and doing PCR? What does this look like? Yeah, so I've done two kinds of studies. One is to try and yeah, culture the fungi directly from samples in the marine environment and see what we get. The problem with this approach is that it's going to prioritize things that are fast growing and things that we already know what they are because the kinds of media we're using to grow them have been the same media that have been used for years. You know, we're feeding them the same things that people have fed them for years. We're going to find the same kinds of things that people have found because we're providing, you know, the same kinds of nutrients. Um, and so I think that you kind of have to get creative in what you provide, you know, media in order to find new organisms. And so part of that, it's, it's difficult to find new things, period. And then it's difficult to find new things when you don't know their growth conditions. And this is a problem that the bacterial field has as well. As you move to DNA-based studies, which is the other part of my work, where you're just surveying the environment, surveying the DNA that's present, and then saying, okay, what actually is there, even though we're not growing all of these things? And you find so many more different things. And that's where we're finding all of these chytridiomycota, these aphylidomycota sequences. And those things are going to need different growth conditions than the conditions that have been used for so many years. And they're going to need um, a lot of people do like baiting where you put out um, – a bucket and then you put feathers or snake skin in the bucket and that'll bring the fungi and kind of enrich them and then you're able to find the chytrids um, using yeah baby hair if it's really blonde these are some of the methods that why, <laughs> why feathers snake skin and baby hair i think it has to do with uh, chitin and um some other compounds that are in them i don't yeah, I, I have no idea. It's just kind of crazy things that were used in olden times that kind of were like, oh, this works. We're going to keep doing it. And yeah, I mean, those methods are successful at getting chytrids enriched and getting them out. And so like a lot of these kind of methods are old. And as we learn more from DNA data, what's there, um, as we can determine what kind of genes they have, we might be able to determine, oh, look, it has, you know, this gene for this carbon compound. We'll put that in the media and suddenly now we're able to culture this organism, right? So a lot of what we're doing right now with marine fungi is more from a DNA-based perspective just because we're finding such a breadth of diversity there. And it, we're not limited then by the culturing, but we're also doing these culturing-based assays um, and what we're finding is, you know, a lot of these generalist taxa, a lot of um, penicillium, aspergillus. And it's not that these things aren't important. I think that these things are critically important in these ecosystems. Um, they're just, uh, they're more studied per se than some of these other interesting lineages that we know so much less about. 